Welcome back to Tech Tuesday. So today's tech tip uh, comes from David who made the great recommendation um, about a week ago on a question in regards to polishing needles. So polishing needles, airbrush needles, is something that you do to increase the performance of it. Basically what it does is it reduces the amount of tip dry you have on, on your airbrush and uh, just allows it to flow a little bit smoother. So we'll talk a little bit more about the science behind that in a second. What I'll start with is the list of um, ingredients that I use to do this. Um, and I'll post these in the description as well. What I'll do is I'll post just general descriptions of them and maybe some links. Um, don't feel like you have to use the links that I provide. It's really just a guide. So as long as you get the general idea, um, you'll be off and running. So what you'll need is a piece of leather and you can get this just about anywhere. I get these just at the craft store. And next is a, uh, a variety of really fine grit sandpaper. So what we'll be using today is 1200 2,000 and 2,500 and um, this is all automotive sandpaper so you can get it wet that's what you want although I don't know how many wood sandpapers go that fine anyway so the wet and dry sandpaper is what you want you'll need some polishing compound and you need something for an airbrush you need something that doesn't have any silicone in it so a lot of these metal polishes chrome polishes have a silicone in them to basically seal up the chrome, for instance, after you polish it on your car. Uh, you don't want that for this because the silicone, especially if you work with um, urethane-based paints, solvent-based paints, that silicone can react to it. So you just want basic polishing, uh, metal polish. You'll also need a small piece of wood. It doesn't, this is a just a blank a piece of oak that I got from, um, from the hardware store. You just need something to lift the needle off the surface that you're working on. So any size will work and I'll show you once you see how this works you'll understand that you can literally use just about anything. And that's it. That's all you need to get started. Okay, so when you buy an airbrush, most airbrushes, uh, there'll be machining on the end of that needle. Basically as they, as they turn them into this point, they'll have machining lines on this. And these little very fine machining lines can catch paint dry paint will just kind of stick to that and increase the tip dry. So the theory behind this whole thing is that we remove those machining marks and leave this needle the same way that it looks, just perfectly smooth, almost like a mirror. Uh, so that's that's the idea. Do you have to do this? No. They, the most quality airbrushes come from the factory with with very finely ground needles and generally you don't have to do it. It's really one of those little extras <clears throat> that you can do. So this video is not about how to repair a needle um, if you bend it, but um, I'll do that in another video. But you can basically attach this polishing part on the end of the repair video as well. So the one thing you want to keep in mind when you get your, when you start to polish your needle, when you decide you want to polish your needle, is what kind of needle you have. If you have a very straight needle like this, it's very easy to polish this. If you have a needle like this, where it actually has stages, two different um, bevels on it, just understand that when you polish it and you smooth that bevel, you're going to change. You may change the geometry of the needle, <clears throat> meaning how it's shaped, and that's going to affect the way the airbrush works. Um, so <clears throat> I won't get into too much on that because that gets into more with the repair video. But just be just be wary of that. If you have a needle like this, basically this would be out of like a. Actually, I can show you. Um, it would be out of say like a. Eclipse BCS, has a needle like this. I'll get you guys real close, so hopefully you can see that. Closer. It's really these needles are tiny. Uh, put a piece of paper on that, and then I think you'll be able to see it. So if you look really close, see how the end of that needle has that little pencil point on it? So that, um, that you got to be careful of because you can polish this without a doubt. <clears throat> um, but you want to be careful not to change that the shape of that needle too much. Now, the good news is on most of the airbrushes that have these two stage needles, this is the big bad Pache VL needle. This has a really, really big uh, taper, I mean a really big separation there. Polishing needles on a VL5 or even a BCS doesn't really do much 
for, for the performance of the airbrush. These brushes are designed to use heavier, thicker paint and blast them out essentially. Not so much the, v, the BCS, but certainly the VL5. Um, so you don't have to, it wouldn't do any good to polish these needles. You wouldn't notice a performance difference. So that's the upside to that. Uh, but be careful of that. So what you're looking for is a needle that is, is smooth. Now this needle is damaged. So uh, see how it's all bent up and everything? So let me pick a needle that's in better shape for our demo. Okay. So you have your brand new airbrush. You want to get it to perform better. So you remove the needle. This is out of a brush that I'm using right now, so it's got a little bit of paint on it, but we'll take care of that in a second. Okay. So here's your needle. This needle is sharp and new and in good shape, but it's got some paint on it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that paint because that's just going to get in the way. And I just have some cleaner on the end of this, on the cloth, and I'm just using it to clean off all that paint. That looks good. That looks good. Okay. So from there, what you want to do. Now I've already polished this needle, so this is going to be kind of just overkill for this needle, but uh, but I'll run through all the steps anyway so you guys can see them. So first thing you want to do is remove that machining. Now on a, on a fine detailed brush like this, the machining is going to be really fine so you don't have to go nuts with it but that's why I have these three different grades of sandpaper depending on how much of that machining is on there uh, so if you look at it and you can see the machining with your naked eye then you start with 1200 if if you can't really make it out if it's I mean again this one's polished so it has that shine to it anyway um, you know what hang on one second let me jump back to that other needle. Even though it's kind of damaged, it'll still give you a better idea. Yeah, let me use this one. I don't think this one's been polished. So I'll clean this off real quick because this has stuff all over it. So same thing, I'm just, basically this time, instead of pulling it out of the cloth, I'm spinning it to get all that paint off. But actually this will work out well. I'll leave some of the paint because we'll, We'll use the paint as machining, essentially. Okay, so say this is a new needle and it's in need of a little bit of polishing. So let's start with the 1200. So 1200 is the, is the, I use heavier grit sandpaper, but just for the repairs, but 1200 is where it starts for polishing. So let me back this up a little bit so you can see what's going on here. There we go. So I use the block of wood to keep the needle off off the surface. So when I'm um, so when I'm working on this, as I as I kind of move it back and forth, my hand isn't jammed on the table. If I just use the sandpaper, my hand's going to be right down on the table, and there's a good chance that I'll want to pick this needle up, and I'll definitely change the geometry of it, and I don't want to do that. Okay. So what you do? Line the sandpaper up. A little bit of water. And the way I hold the needle so I can do this is like this. So I'll put the needle through my pinky, not through my pinky, <laughs> through the two fingers in between the pinky and your ring finger. And then I can hold it with my index finger and that way I can roll it and having it tucked in here keeps it steady. So that way I can just kind of maneuver it without having to worry about it sliding all around. So that's how that works. Okay, back to it. Get you guys close again. So the water helps remove the material as it comes off. Because you're not going to be taking a lot off, but you are going to be taking some off. So what you want to do is you want to basically line this up so that it's so that the whole surface of the needle is, is on the paper. You don't want to tilt it up, you don't want to tilt it down. You want to really be conscious of, of um, keeping that needle exactly where 
the bevel is. And you go real slow and just back and forth. And the way you can kind of tell, which is hard to see here, but as you move it across with the water, you'll see all of the water moving. If you only see like a strip in the front of water moving, you know that you have it tilted up. Likewise, if you have it tilted down and you only see the strip in the back, you know that that's you know, not where it needs to be either. So the water does really two things. It helps keep the sandpaper clean, but it also helps to keep you in the right spot with the bevel of the needle. And like I said, I'll get into more on the geometry of the needle. You can change it, and it'll change the way that the airbrush works, but that's for the repair video, not for this video. Okay. So you can almost feel it. You can almost feel when it's done, uh, because it'll change the, the feel of the, the drag will, will be different. And the sound is also different, too, once you get it to the point where it's basically not doing anything anymore. So once I'm done with 1,200 on this one, I'll move to 25. I'm sorry, 2,000. For most airbrush needles, 2,000 is enough, but um, I usually use 2,500 as well. Um, it just makes the, the final step a little bit easier. Okay, so same same thing. <clears throat> excuse me. Same thing with the 2,000. Make sure you're making contact across the whole needle, the whole bevel. And what I'm doing is I'm as I'm pushing it, I'm rotating it, and then I'm rotating it back. So I'm making sure that I get sure that I get even sanding across the entire bevel all the way around evenly. And I'm not using a ton of pressure. You know, you're not trying to reshape the needle. You're just trying to remove those very fine machining marks that are on this thing. Should be good for the 2000. And for good measure, we'll jump to 2500. And let, what 2500 does, to taking that little extra step, it just removes the last bits of the 2000 scratches so that when you go to polish it, it doesn't take very long at all. If you omit the 2500, you can certainly polish out 2000 scratches, uh, but it just takes a little bit longer. These papers go even finer than this. I mean, you can get paper that basically feels like a piece of paper, that, that fine a grit, which is overkill uh, for the most part, but Okay, and again, you know, you don't want to dig in, you just want to be really light with it. You want to be conscious of the angle that you have this at. Because remember, we're not changing the angle of that needle, we're just removing that very fine material that's on those machining marks. And there we go. Okay, so that is it. Okay, so for the last step, you grab your piece of leather and you do the same thing. You just kind of put it on the edge of the, the block of wood. Get a little bit of polish. So I get a little bit of polish. Just kind of twist it in there. Doesn't usually take much. And what's nice is once you do this a bunch like I have, this dried polish, the white stuff here, still works. It's just dried. So you, after a while, when you have this thing totally covered, sometimes you don't even need to go grab new polish. You can just use the dried polish that's on there. Okay. So it's the same kind of thing here. You just make contact across and just roll it across, and you'll immediately see all that black, and that's just material being removed, which is just what you want. You want to be really careful with the, with the suede, as you would with the paper, but more so with the suede. As you move, I usually go in one direction, so I'll usually go up because it's easier for me. So I'll roll it, but then consciously pick it up off the surface to move it back and then repeat. The reason why I don't go back and forth, why I don't go back and forth with this, is because there's a real good chance when you start to go, come back in the opposite direction that you'll snag the needle into the suede. And, uh, and a light snag won't do anything, but you can't bend the tip of the needle if you hit it hard enough, if you're really aggressive. So to make sure I don't do that, 
I'll just go in one direction with the polish. Again, with the 2500, I don't have to do this that much, so it's not like I have to sit here and go nuts with it. Let's see how black that turns. So that's the end of the real nasty material being, or not nasty, but you know, the end of the material being kind of taken off of this thing. And you can't, I mean, you can't do this enough, so, or too much, don't, so don't worry about it. You just want to really get this thing, this will give it that really mirrored polish, basically get it as polished as you can get it. Now, obviously, airbrush companies don't do this because it's, for the, for the return on investment, for them, it's not worth it. Um, but for you as a, you know, as an airbrush user, you can take a few minutes and do this and really improve the performance of your, especially your detail airbrushes. Uh, so, so don't think they're skipping a step, you know, when they're building these airbrushes, this is really above and beyond type of stuff. Okay. Same deal here. When you start to, it doesn't have a different feel, but you can see there's no more black being deposited here because I've kind of gone through the polish, but that's usually one round is enough. So then you can take a clean paper towel, wipe off any residual polish. And now, even though this is dented at the end, you have a polished needle. So now the paint really has less stuff to stick to on this needle. Well, not this needle because the end of the needle is damaged, but um, on a straight needle, on a new needle, if you do this polishing trick, it really does reduce the amount of tip dry that you have because the paint doesn't have as much area to stick to now. So there you go. All right, if you have any questions on polishing needles, you can put them down below. What I've loved in the in the past couple tips is people have seen what I've done and in uh, they kind of put in their suggestions on what they do. So please feel free to do that too. Um, and, um, and if you have any suggestions like Dave for uh, additional tips and tricks videos, put those in the comments as well. I love that. It gives me a, gives me a direction to go. I have a, a list of things that I want to cover, but I love adding to that list. So please help me with that. If you um, haven't subscribed yet and enjoyed this, please do that. Turn on your notifications uh, and I will see you guys for the next one. All right. Have a good one.